got past number one seed Nuna Asatrin of Russia on split decision in a pretty strange semi-final. Both had two points deducted. I thought Asatrin was more the offender than Richardson. Asatrin didn't seem to really want to engage. Richardson got past her in the end by three scores to two. Beat Ellie Gartland of Ireland by unanimous decision in the previous round. And for the Ukraine, Amina Abramova beat Victoria Shashko of Belarus by unanimous decision. And then in her semi-final got past Daniela Golino of Italy again by unanimous decision. So yet to drop a card. Bronze in the European Youths in 2019. As I said earlier on, Ukraine well represented in these finals. So we can expect to see a hard fought contest here I'm sure head guards just being put into place and just a, a final word time for a final word from the from the coaches taking a while to get that head guard on there for Abramova. So this is the fourth final of the afternoon session. And it's been a fantastic seven or eight days. Great situation for the boxers as well, the way the tournament's been set up, all staying in the Lido Dabruzzo in the villas. It's a little holiday camp, basically, just on the beach on the Adriatic coast where we are here in Rosetto. So everything is on hand. There's no travelling whatsoever once you manage to arrive at the, at the venue itself. And action kept coming thick and fast over those first six days in ring A and ring B so final instructions here from the referee and Richardson of England in the red Abramova of Ukraine in the blue physically there's not too much difference between these two Richardson maybe just got a little bit of a little bit of size on Abramova this in the lightweight division 60 kilos Richardson looking to get things underway with a jab there. The referee just having a quick word about putting the shoulder in. Stepping into that 1-2 Richardson, which she does get to work for her pretty well, if given the opportunity. She can keep it long, keep it more on the outside. Abramova, as you see there, likes more to get in close, set her feet and work to the body, work to the head with those hooks. Well, referee could call to break any time now. Just allow them to work their own way out of it. And then having a word with both of them about a little bit of hitting around the back of the head. But that's going to happen if they're, if they're right up close and clinching like that. Then just allowed to, to box on. Fighters can't keep their fists still. It's just not in their nature. You see it again there. Abramova just looping that left arm around the back of Richardson's head. Richardson, it'll suit her more here if she can keep this at distance. The two of them come together again. Neither one of them has really settled into their own kind of rhythm yet. As I say, Richardson looks, looks handy with that one, two. That's a good weapon for her. The jab is decent. Abramova will want more to get into that kind of mid-range. Either at the minute they've been all the way out or all the way in. And for that reason, it's been difficult really for either of them to get too much done. And it's got quite messy in this opening round as Richardson just takes a little tumble there. She has the gloves wiped off and a point goes. A point goes there from Abramova. I think maybe for initiating a few too many of those clinches. And in the end there, Richardson ended up on, on the ground. And that's why the point deduction 
was made. So that is a, a big plus for Richardson in this opening round. There's not been a lot in this first round. If she can kick on and win this opening round as well, then that would open up a significant gap on the scorecards after the opening round. And one thing I would say about what we've seen so far, although not too much clean has, has got through, that the fighter who has been trying to fight more of the two, I would say, has been the, the fighter wearing red. And when it's difficult to differentiate between the two on the grounds of scoring punches, then that kind of secondary criteria, if you like, can and does count. Dipping low at the waist there, Abramova. Heading into the final 20 seconds. The referee just having a word with Richardson about pushing down on the back of the head. They're not slow to take points, the officials. Richardson saw two disappear in her semi against her opponent, who also had two taken. So you can't just put that point deduction in your pocket and think that that's something that can't be levelled up, because it definitely can. So there goes the bell at the end of the first round. Messy, wasn't it? A bit messy. Yeah, and I just think... A slightly more success came from the woman in the other corner with her straight punches. Abramova did have success with some of her hooks, but so much of the action was punctuated by grappling. They see some nice shots landed by both of them, and they clearly know what they're doing given their credentials coming in. But of course, whatever score transpires, we're going to have to factor in the point that was taken off for that infringement right there, the headlock, where Gemma Richardson was wrestled down to the canvas. And again, you see the punch-picking prowess with that right hand from Abramova, but 10-9 for four of the five judges. So that makes it a 10-8 round, effectively, when you factor in the scorecards. And even for the fourth judge for whom Abramova won, that is no more than 9-9 because it's 10 minus one. That is the impact of a warning, how costly they can be in this three-round format. Absolutely, absolutely. They can be pretty much fatal. So Richardson in the red of England, Abramov of Ukraine in blue, and it's Richardson with a two-point lead with four of the judges going into round two. I did have her just taking that opening round, but it was close, so I've got no truck really with the judge who went Abramov's way. She did get some decent work done on the inside. It was more the kind of look of the fight for me, the dynamic of it, more than what was landed, which, which gave Richardson a little bit more of an advantage as well. And again, they just falling quite tight quite close there and the referee just having a word with Richardson about tapping around the back of the head and as I said just because she's enjoyed the benefit of that point being taken for her, her opponent she can't rest easy here in ring B particularly which I've been watching it's been pretty easy to lose points officials have been quick to take points away the referee just telling Abramova to I think just listen a bit more basically and respond to instruction. Nice jab there from Richardson. Again looking for that one-two. Jab just falling short there for Richardson. Bramover closed the gap quick there and let the left hand go. That one landed. Almost halfway through round two, so the midway point of the contest. The women's lightweight final we're watching here between Gemma Richardson of, of England in the red and Amina. Abramova of Ukraine in the blue. Decent looking one too there from Richardson. I'm not sure how clean it got through. It brought a big cheer from the crowd behind me. And the same thing again there. The left hand came back there from Abramova. But again, it's Richardson on the front foot here, really. She's, she's driving this fight. And I would say has, has landed the, the better shots in the opening two minutes of, of round two. If she can manage to take this round with three of those judges who've currently got it 10-8, then she's basically won the fight unless something pretty extraordinary happens in the final round because that would see her go into round three with a three-point advantage with three judges. And you need three judges out of five, of course, to get the decision. And there's that one-two again from Richardson. And just not really enough has come back from Abramova in this second round. She's been outworked. Richardson has been busy with the jab, busy with the one-two. Got a nice kind of fluidity about as she manages to throw it without really ever loading up or or taking too much energy away. A little bit lazy with it there, maybe. Abramova was looking to try and come back with something, but for the most part in round two, she's managed to maintain that gap, that distance, Richardson, by using that one-two. And Abramova's found it very difficult to get up close, get inside that longer, rangier reach. 
and get too much work done. And she looks like she's feeling the pace too as well here, the fighter, the fighter in blue. So there goes the, the hooter at the end of the <laughs> second round. And we would expect at the end of the round to see that, I would say, chalked up as a round win for Richardson, in which case you'll pretty much be out of sight. I don't want really to get ahead of myself. What did you see? I saw exactly that because of actions such as this. There you see what Abramov is attempting to do, trying to make her opponent miss and then counter, but the deeper we got into the round, the more she was waiting. She clearly knows what she's doing, but again, you see the better of that exchange going to the woman in red, and the deeper we got into the round, Abramova in this position, waiting, 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 and being outscored and outworked during the exchanges. So for my money, the more that round progressed, the more dominant Richardson became, and there she has taken it on a unanimous clean sweep of the cards. So she leads for all judges, and for four of the five judges, she has got a three-point advantage. She has to remain switched on. That's all she's got to do, and she will be the European ch under-22 champion. Absolutely. It will take a couple of point deductions, really, to, to turn this around now for Abramova. We've just got a quick look in the in the crowd there of one of her Ukrainian teammates who we who we saw earlier on, Olga Shalimova, who was I think slightly unlucky to lose her her final, but she's trying to will on Amina Abramova. It's not going her way either at the moment though. Richardson just allowing herself to be taken back to the ropes there over on the far side, forty seconds into into round three. Again, she's just up on the toes, Richardson, looking to try and just snap out that jab, put the backhand on it sooner rather than later. Just moving around the, the clock face there, as you described it earlier on, Ron, just keeping her, her opponent moving, keeping her turning. Disciplined in this round so far, just using the single jabs for the most part, looking for the right hand every now and again. She's got a nice kind of relaxed style which allows her to throw that one-two. As I said, without really taking too much out of the tank. Abramov are looking to, to close the gap there and getting close, which is where she needs to be because she doesn't really throw a jab. She throws a lead left hand like she did there every now and again, but it's just a range finder just to see if, if the right hand might land. And she sprang in looking for that right hand, but it didn't manage to reach past the midway point of the round and this has been messy at times it's been a little bit disjointed the the referee just having another word with Richardson there were he to take a point at this stage then the red corner would be able to soak that one up decent head movement there from Abramov the referee immediately I think telling off there for dipping too low at the waist it looked like a, a good piece of work to me it's the final minute Abramov trying to close the distance there but if anything just Moves in a little bit too quick. Didn't manage to get any telling punches away before that space had kind of disappeared and she didn't really have any room to work. But again, there goes the jab. Jab, jab, jab. And coaches love to see a good jab because, as anybody will tell you, everything comes off the jab. You do see fighters at a very high level, both amateur and pro, who don't really use that jab tall fighters as well sometimes they've got the natural attributes you would think to to box on the outside and, and make use of that height and that reach and, and sometimes they just don't seem to really have that in their in their armory but Richardson very much has for a 60 kilo fighter she's pretty tall pretty rangy and as we get to the final bell <laughs> round three was pretty similar to round two I would say and and Richardson is going to she's going to take gold here to answer her already and impressive medal haul. Abramova just never really got into it, did she? She didn't, she didn't manage to give herself any encouragement, really. She tried to go for it in the third and final round, but again, you suspect that is against her instincts as a natural counter-puncher to get over that front foot and initiate and lead off and just not able to produce anywhere near the dominant round that she required, but she never stopped competing but this announcement will confirm Gemma Richardson as the champion. The winner is Red Corner, Gemma 
So she's successful for a second time in this venue. Three years ago, she got gold in the European Youth, Gemma Richardson, and now she's back on the Adriatic coast, scooping another gold, this time in the European under-22s, and she won wins round three, 10-9 with all the judges. So she only was lost one round out of out of 15 there, if you want to look at it like that, with those three rounds all being scored by those five judges at, at ringside. And with the point off, that was a comprehensive win. It's the most comfortable win we've seen so far today alongside, alongside Romain Moulai. So after two very tight finals with our opening two bouts, we've had two wider ones. And next up, we've got the women's light welterweights. 